Greetings and welcome to another one of these LGR Weird Mouse videos where I've uh, just been going through my collection and uncovering yet more odd mouse input devices that uh, I don't know if they deserve talking about, but we're going to do it anyway. <laughs> so we've got a few here this time, uh, starting with this Sony Memory Stick mouse. There's a bunch of these that Sony made, but this one in particular opens up, flips open to reveal a memory stick reader inside of there. And I've also got this The Sims illuminated mood mouse, which yeah, lights up a little plumb bob inside there to match your Sims current mood in game. And then there's this, which uh, yeah, the FM MP3 player mouse sort of FM 2000 radio mouse. It's an FM radio in a mouse. <laughs> it's got its own antenna and stuff. Anyway, this is some weirdness. Let's dive in. All right, let's take a look at this Sony Memory Stick mouse uh, for Windows 98 and beyond. A USB optical mouse with the whole uh, thing being that it has a memory stick reader. It just flips open and you've got the, the reader right there instead of having to use some other external thing for memory sticks. There are a bunch of these. This is the MSAC US 70, but I wanted one in this style in particular because I've frequently gotten emails and tweets and various mentions online from people saying, oh my goodness, you want a weird looking mouse? And so I've been wanting to get this for a while. It took me a while to find this one. I do have some other memory stick <laughs> mouse devices because Sony was just all in on this format. And in case you're not aware, the uh, memory stick was something introduced by Sony for use primarily in Sony devices in late 1998, early 1999, just as a competitor to all the other flash formats out there, used in lots of digital cameras, of course, but also media players and the PSP. You know, it's just from that point in time where Sony was experimenting with proprietary formats. And, and by that point in time, I mean forever and always, Sony has always done this. They can't seem to stop and I think they have a problem. But anyway, uh, this seems to be a pretty straightforward mouse otherwise, but we'll see. You just never know. I've never used this. I've never opened it. It's still sealed. Try to get this apart without completely ruining the packaging. Wow, surprising amount of paperwork and stuff. What in the world? Um, I think it's just like plastic welded shut. Well, that was a bunch of dumbness to get apart, but anyway, and uh, there's the mouse. It's pretty small. Uh, nice little clicks, kind of softened click, decent-ish wheel. It's just very small, very light. But yeah, this is the main attraction right here. <laughs> Look at that. Almost looks like it's supposed to be a, a fingerprint scanner or something. Yeah, the idea is that right there. Ooh, it's got a nice little spring looted bit. <laughs> that's, that's what that is. It's just that Sony design. It's the whole fact that it opens and closes like that and it's stowed away and you got it right there without having to have another kind of memory card reader. Let's see what all this paperwork is about. Uh, for the customers using Windows XP. Yeah, the drivers aren't signed, I guess. Or they're not verified for compatibility, but I guess they are. Yeah, 2002. Wh why didn't they just update the drivers? There's manual here with 46 pages. It does have Sonic Stage version 1.5. Comprehensive software for enjoying music. I do remember a friend of mine had that or something very similar to it that came with the uh, Sony Mini Disc player. It's a proper CD. This is a very, I always thought it was like a, a burned thing <laughs> by the blueness here, but no, that's the label. But uh, yeah, let's go ahead and give this a try on a computer. See what kind of memory stickness we get. All right, got the LGR Megaluminum Monster going here. The mouse is plugged in, Windows 98. And yeah, it just worked straight away once I got the driver installed. Yeah, this right here, memory stick, USB reader slash writer, the MSAC US70. That's all it needed. And it did install a couple of applications. Of course, the Sonic Stage that we knew about, but also this memory stick formatter application. And that's literally all it's for. Formatting memory sticks, if you got one. So let's put one in. very satisfying mechanism. 
There it is, 16 whole Daga megabytes. And you can see in a previous life, it was quite likely used in a digital camera from Sony. But yeah, we can just go ahead and format there and uh, get our, our space back. And that's it. No need to do any kind of mounting or like un whatever. You don't have to click anything to have it eject. It's just always ready to go. I immediately see the appeal. This is really cool to have this. If you had your devices with memory sticks or magic gate, of course, uh, in terms of how it feels as a mouse and the accuracy, I mean, it should be no surprise that it's actually fantastic. Sony, I don't know if I've ever had a mouse from them that was bad. It's uh, always at least tolerable. I don't know why I chose those colors. I should do some different ones. Let's see. Yeah. Sony mice, I've always enjoyed. This one is a little bit small for my taste. Of course, how about the Duke Nukem test? Let's rock. Damn, there's a of paper shooting up my... Wait, I have a Sony memory stick mouse. We gotta test this. That we do, Duke. Yeah, obviously no surprise that it's gonna be just fine for, uh, for this, as long as you're cool with the size of the mouse. And uh, it truly is just the size and a little bit of the shape that I don't like. Everything else is pretty great. And last, we got that Sonic Stage software, apparently version 1.5 from 2002 here. And I gotta give it a shot because I haven't used this in like literally decades. We should be able to write to the memory stick doing this. Uh, so let's give it a shot. Yeah. Oh, wow. <laughs> It's just all these transitions. Anyway, uh, we got our different sources like audio CDs or a music drive. I think this will count as the memory stick. So let's go to the record window and uh, let's get a CD. And you know what? I had the perfect thing in mind. Something I picked up in LGR Thrift's episode 50. This is uh, the World Wrestling Federation Superstars WrestleMania, the album. Yeah. <laughs> a truly inspiring uh, bit of pop culture history I had no idea existed. Honestly, I only want one track and that is track seven. Yeah, let's do right there. Record that. Oh, what? Uh, <laughs> Windows 98. At it again. Oh man. All right. Well, maybe we can't do that. All right. Well, I tried a few different things and uh, it just does not want to work with the Sony software. So Gonna go with a good old EAC exact audio copy here. All right, we have it saved to our mouse or the memory stick within it. The tower of power, too sweet to be sour, funky like a monkey, ooh yeah. <laughs> this, was, this was such a highlight of my recent thrifting. <laughs> but anyway, <laughs> that's it for this mouse. It, it does exactly what it says it'll do and uh, nothing more. It's just actually a pretty good mouse with legit use for old memory cards. Well, Sewell, Sewell, let's take a look at this Sims mouse. You can tell it's supposed to be four or came out around the time of uh, Sims 3 being the newest thing. But yeah, they took out the three and they're just like, oh, it's just a The Sims mouse, <laughs> illuminated mouse. Yeah, I remember when this came out, I had one and I used it like once and I was like, ah, oh, it's kind of a fun little gimmick. You know, it's supposed to change the color of the LED in there to match the mood of your Sim. But yeah, I, I used it once and I was like, eh, it's not a good mouse and <laughs> I put it away. That's made by Mad Cats. I don't know if I realized that or remembered. Uh, Windows 7, Windows Vista, Windows XP. Oh yeah, 2011. So about 13 years, because I used it right when it came out and that was it. Anyway, uh, I guess this only works with The Sims 3. I know this is definitely meant to work with The Sims 3, but I think it might also work with The Sims 4 because there is an option in the menu for that game for using uh, accessories like this. And there are other things too. Like I also remember The Sims had this little external plumb bob that you'd plug in to use. Yeah, that was a thing as well. I think that was uh, something that predated this, but then they used the idea and they're just stuck in a mouse. But yeah, let's get this open. All right, the Sims 3 illuminated mouse. A bunch of languages, what do we got here? Installation. 
plug it in, download drivers from the Mad Cats website. Well, oh yeah, I remember, I remember now. <laughs> this is, it just has this like sh kind of sharp plasticky edge. The thing feels like it weighs absolutely nothing. The wheel is actually all right. The clicking is fine, kind of harsh, but whatever. And then yeah, just the, the whole, feel of it, the look of it, everything about it screams toy, not an actual mouse. Of course, the biggest thing though is, um, you know, this lights up and matches your Sims color or the Sims mood color. And in case you're not aware, yeah, you got this little plumb bob in the game and it's like happy, not so happy, angry, more or less. And the thing is, it's constantly covered up by your hand so you never see it. I mean, you see a little bit sort of glowing. Anyway, we'll see that, uh, let's plug it in and See how it goes, and we give it a second shot years later. <laughs> All right, just reinstalled The Sims 3 for the first time in forever. Let's get this plugged in. And as you can see here, it does start glowing right away. And if The Sims 3 is not going, then it just cycles through the red, green, and yellow colors. And that's, that's all it does, unless you're playing the game, but yeah, I'll just let it cycle through here. So yeah, not quite RGB, I guess it's more RGY, <laughs> but uh, every minute or so, it cycles through those just on its own. And that's all it does until you get the drivers and a supported game going. So in terms of the drivers, well, Mad Cats, unsurprisingly, does not have it listed on their website anymore. However, I was able to find this file here. Uh, yeah, it was on one of those shady driver websites, but yeah, it did actually get it working. It shows up as a Sims 3 Mood Mouse by SciTech, even though it's a Mad Cat's driver. Anyway, it works still with Windows 11. So yeah, let's just open the Sims 3 here. And as soon as the game starts up, it actually turns off the LED or dims it all the way, I guess, because it's still slightly glowing green. I won't actually turn back on again until you load up a game with some Sims. So here we go. <laughs> and well, uh, yeah, just uh, started up a, a save real quick earlier so I can get some Sims angry. And you can see it is glowing red here because we have Nancy Landgrab in kind of a, an angry mood. Um, Jeffrey is also in an angry mood and he's green. Uh, Malcolm is not doing great either, but it's also green. But yeah, you can see as I click through them, it will actually change the color. Poor Nancy, it's at least get her some food or something. Maybe, <laughs> maybe if it uh, gets in a better food hunger state, she'll be turning into the yellow Ellie. Oh, there's a yellow, okay. So yeah, for whatever reason at that point, it turned yellow there. I guess it really does just rely completely on the plumb bob above their head, as opposed to the color that's around their portrait over on the far left. So that's a little confusing, but whatever, that's fine. Yellow, green, red. Uh, sir, use the bathroom. <laughs> but yeah, as you can uh, see here, as I was uh, saying earlier, in terms of like just using it, it, it's pretty much covered up by your hand. I mean, you can kind of see it on the side and you know, I guess the, the wheel a little bit, but just by how I grip it at least, it's usually like this right here. And uh, there's, <laughs> there's not much to see. So, oh well, it's a silly gimmick, but I guess it's kind of fun. I wish it was a better mouse is the thing. Oh my goodness, this huge open world. <laughs> oh, it just keeps going. This game is, it's so big. And this is just the base game. Like just the starting map. Yeah, like I was saying, it, it, it's a perfectly serviceable mouse. Go play in the fire. Yeah, it's not bad exactly. It's a little too sensitive on the clicks, like barely putting any pressure, just sort of, I don't know. And I don't like the sharpness here. Again, it's just, it's just the way I hold a mouse, I suppose. The wheel's actually pretty good. And the weight is just, it's far too light. Like it's one of those where, you know, the, the cord is barely moved and it just starts moving the whole dang mouse around. It's not 
a pleasant mouse to use, but hey, it glows. If only it worked with other games. Well, maybe it does. Let's try. Guys, I got The Sims 4 on here, and like I said, I know that supports uh, the Plum Bob USB thing, and I think there might even have been a Sims 4 glowing mouse. I don't know. There, there were some other products, like a headset or something. Holy crap, The Sims 4 loads so much faster. Dynamic lighting, turn that on. Uh, see how, if, if this does anything. Considering it's still just like glowing, going through the motions or going through the, the routine that it does when nothing is going, I'm assuming it might not work. All right, so yeah, just clicking on Duke Nukem there, he's got a green plum bob and it's still red. Uh, hers is also green, you know, his is yellow. Yeah, see even though, I mean, it's changing colors, but that's just because it's going through the, the loop, the routine of its, its regular color changes. So I guess this doesn't work with The Sims 4. That's disappointing. I was really hoping that the dynamic lighting option would allow that, but uh, I guess not. I guess that's just for the specific peripherals that The Sims 4 wants to use. And this one, The Sims Illuminated Mouse from 2011 doesn't work with it. Oh well, still kinda almost neat in a way, sort of, kind of, meh. Now this, this is a fascinating mouse because I've got so many questions and the only way to answer them really is, is to try it out. So uh, this is the FM2000 radio mouse with uh, <laughs> the uh, most amazing packaging design ever. There is, there's stuff on every single surface. Not a single one of the sides has the same writing or text or images. And, I mean, talk about the whole graphic design is my passion meme personified. Specialized design for FM2000 radio mouse. Worldwide patents pending. High quality FM stereo radio with noise shielding technology for the multimedia PC environment. Easy to install, build in high sensitivity FM antenna. I just don't know what they mean by any of this exactly. Like it's clearly got, well, I don't know if it's super clear. I, I guess it's clear that it has a built-in FM receiver, radio circuitry of some kind into in the mouse, I guess. I, I, I don't imagine that there's like separate components for that. I really just don't know because it says USB slash RCA cable attached to FM mouse and then FM antenna. But here and on the front, it says build in, or I get built in is what they're trying to say, FM antenna. So is it in the mouse? Is it a separate FM thing and the mouse is just a mouse? There's <laughs> more questions. Uh, the more you look at this, and I've been wanting to um, get it apart and do just that for years. So let me see how I can do this without ruining it. See, I, I have so many different FM uh, radio devices for PCs, but this is, yeah, this is looking like an external antenna, which is like how all the other ones are, but yeah, so we've got, that's not RCA. This is um, like a three and a half mil, just pass through thing with a USB. So we've got audio here. And then this switch plugs into this, I suppose. So this is the FM radio antenna. And you've got some suction cups. All right, so that kind of answers some questions, sort of. Wow, this feels like it's made of greeting cards. Just a cheap material. Anyway, uh, <laughs> PC586 slash Pentium or higher, Windows 2000 slash 98, USB, no, 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 Mouse goes into USB, plug FM mouse's female jack and RCA mono jack of T-type antenna. We're gonna look inside the mouse anyway, but I'm assuming that there's nothing in here except for radio components and then just they made the antenna external from this because that wouldn't make sense to uh, have it all in here. You just wouldn't get very good reception. And even though it is USB, this I guess is just for the mouse because it's saying to plug this into your sound card to get sound for the radio portion. <laughs> so in effect, yeah, this is like no different than any of the other FM radio devices that I have for PCs which are usually just like a, a card or a USB plug-in device that has the radio circuitry and an antenna. This just happens to have some of those components built into a mouse for who knows what reason. 
it'd be one thing if, if there were speakers or something on the mouse, but no, there's not. Well, let's try it first before I take it all apart. I just, it feels so cheap that I don't trust it to stay together. So we'll test it and then we'll uh, take it apart. <laughs> oh, I just noticed the CD artwork too. Wonderful, E-Tech USA. Yeah, let's test this thing. And you know, I don't normally show the plugging in the mouse because it's usually just USB or serial or PS2 or something, but we got all this. So again, it says to put the T-type antenna up and out there and you know, you know, pad all these pass-throughs. I assume the suction cups it wants me to put on a window, but I ain't got no windows here. I mean, I got Windows 98. So yeah, antenna plugs in right there. And that'll go into the line in on the sound card. So the CD-ROM brings up this here. You got a mouse utility and FM radio utilities for US slash Europe and then also Japan, cause yeah, they go to different frequencies. Kind of manual, but eh, you know, let's just do this. Uh, sure, USB, cool. Well, been messing around with this for about an hour and it does not want to work. So it keeps showing up as this all mouse, serial mouse, even though it's a USB mouse and I selected USB and the software and the drivers so I uninstalled and reinstalled all those. Tried some of the other drivers on the CD and what it comes up with is this all spirit, all mouse, PS2 or serial. Uh, like I said, even though this is USB, so maybe there's just some built-in conversion from either PS2 or serial. Either way, it's not working. Well, this is one reason I keep Windows Millennium Edition around, believe it or not. And yeah, on here, it just worked straight away. It's under the mouse here as a Cypress USB mouse. And then with the all mouse software going here, it puts up this little all eyes, one of those little applet cursor tracker deals. Saw them a lot on Windows 3.195 shareware compilations. But uh, yeah, the program itself for the mouse is really just an alternative version of the control panel from Windows, although you can change things like the mouse color and size and stuff here. You got a fully transparent one and an inverted one, a little tiny one. And then you can change what the middle third mouse button does. So you can have it simulate keyboard presses of these specific keys or have it do a function uh, like a thing in Windows. So for instance, there we go. Now it is a zoom button on your mouse. Handy stuff. Although it is a little, <laughs> these, these, these buttons are so sensitive that you barely, like just barely touch them. I, I'm constantly misclicking. Of course, the main thing here is the FM mouse program itself. And yeah, it's working. We've got a radio. <laughs> and you got your volume right here. Just going through the line in of the computer. And yeah, there you go, it's it's a FM radio. These are just uh, stations I already had in there. I haven't put any of the local ones in, but yeah, it's picking up everything local that I would expect it to. The scanning is really quite slow though. I mean, you can see there it's, yeah, it's, it takes a sweet time. I ah, keep middle clicking. Like I said, it's very easy to accidentally hit the wrong mouse button individual presets for whatever you want to listen to. And you can store those in there and you get alarms and on and off kind of stuff. You can have it go through routines at certain times of day. How nice this is actually uh, fully <laughs> functional. You also have this recording thing uh, where you can just store things as WAV files. And then there's a separate program that it installed to compress them to MP3s. So very basic MP3 compressor program, but yeah, record it in CD quality audio. Well, what do you know? Oh, yeah, when it tunes into stereo, it gets really loud. Anyway, it lets you save that to a wave file and uh, yeah, that's, that's pretty much it in terms of the, the radio program and I mean, in a way, that's pretty much it in terms of the mouse. It, it, it's a mouse with an FM radio tuner, with some circuitry built in, and it connects to the external antenna, and that's what it is. Um, actually, as, as far as a mouse, uh, I don't, dang it, I don't mind it, except for ugh, the stupid buttons. 
but I like the shape. I actually don't mind the weight and, you know, the ball itself is nice and accurate. Uh, no problems whatsoever in that aspect. Of course, we got to open the thing up and see exactly what is in there in terms of the uh, <laughs> circuitry and radio stuff. So let's go ahead and do that. Unfortunately, the uh, little piece that held the back in there is just some plastic. It was jammed in place and it just snapped as I was pulling it apart earlier. But yeah, just very cheap, <laughs> low cost mouse construction. No surprise there. And for the most part, the mouse just looks like a mouse with the addition of those few radio components. So yeah, the rectangular chip with the white text, that's just a pretty standard USB mouse microcontroller but the square chip right there that's kind of hard to read, that is a Philips TEA5757 self-tuned radio. And it's pretty much just a radio on a chip with the ability to seek and go through the different stations on its own. And it, it's small enough to fit inside of a mouse, so I guess whatever company made this was just figured, hey, why not? And you know, it works pretty well for what it is, uh, having the external antenna and stuff certainly helps. I imagine it wouldn't be great uh, if it were just all inside the mouse, but you know, considering you just never know with this kind of packaging and like the cheapness and everything about it was slightly confusing. Um, yeah, it's, it's really not that bad. The FM MP3 mouse by E-Tech or Cypress or whoever the heck, uh, it's, it's fascinatingly okay. And well, that's about it for another one of these LGR weird mouse device videos. Another three down, another however the heck many in my collection. There are so many weird mice. Let me know if there's any that I haven't covered that you want to see in the future, perhaps. Or if you had any of these, particularly the weird radio mouse, or if there's any more like it, I'm sure there has to be. But yeah, I hope you enjoyed watching this. I certainly enjoyed putting it together, uh, you know, every so often whenever there's nothing else quite ready to be finished up for the week. That is it for this one. And as always, thank you very much for watching LGR.